The Victorian mansion stood tall against the backdrop of the setting sun, its silhouette casting long, haunting shadows across the sprawling grounds. Inside, the study was a cocoon of dim light and silence, save for the soft hum of a desk lamp and the distant ticking of a grandfather clock. Dr. Eleanor Gray sat at her desk, her fingers dancing over the pages of her notebook. The room, with its high ceilings and ornate woodwork, seemed to breathe around her, the walls echoing with the memories of a time long past. As she wrote, a faint sound broke her concentration aside, almost like a breath, so soft it could have been mistaken for the wind. She paused, her pen hovering over the paper. Listening intently, she waited for the sound to repeat, but the room remained silent. Eleanor shook her head, attributing the noise to the quirks of the old house. She was about to resume her work when a knock on the door startled her. Come in, she called her voice slightly shaky. The door creaked open to reveal Jonathan, the local handyman, holding a toolbox. Evening, Dr. Gray, he greeted, his eyes darting around the room, never settling on hers. I've brought back those tools I borrowed. Thank you, Jonathan, Eleanor replied, sensing his unease. Is everything all right? He hesitated, his gaze lingering on the window where the last rays of sunlight were fading. This house. He began, then stopped, searching for words. It has a way of getting into your head. Eleanor raised an eyebrow, intrigued. How so? Jonathan shifted uncomfortably. Just be careful. Listen to the house, but don't let it consume you. Before Eleanor could press further, he left, leaving her with more questions than answers. Her curiosity peaked. She decided to explore the mansion further. Ascending the creaky staircase, she found herself drawn to the attic. Pushing open the door, she was met with a room shrouded in dust and cobwebs. Amidst the forgotten relics of the past, a stack of old journals caught her eye. She picked one up, its pages yellowed with age. As she began to read, she was transported into the lives of the mansion's previous inhabitants. Entry after entry spoke of strange occurrences, shadows that moved on their own, cold spots in the middle of summer, and, most disturbingly, whispers that seemed to come from the walls themselves. Eleanor's heart raced as she read, the weight of the house's history pressing down on her. The last entry was dated just a year ago, written by the mansion's previous owner. It read, The whispers grow louder each day. I fear I'm losing my mind. This house is alive and it hungers. Closing the journal, Eleanor felt a chill run down her spine. The room seemed to close in on her, the shadows deepening. She could hear it again, that faint sigh, now accompanied by murmured conversations as if the walls were speaking to her. The mansion, with its dark secrets, beckoned her deeper into its embrace. Moonlight streamed through the attic window, casting an ethereal glow over stacks of forgotten memories. Eleanor's fingers brushed over the leather-bound journals, each one a testament to the mansion's enigmatic past. The whispers, once faint, now echoed with urgency, guiding her to the pages that spoke of them. She opened the first journal, its pages yellowed with age. March 12, 1885. The whispers grow louder. I am not alone. The entry was short, but the frantic handwriting spoke volumes. The next journal, dated a few decades later, read, They speak in hushed tones, always just out of reach. The house knows. Eleanor's heart raced. The logical part of her mind, the psychologist, sought a rational explanation. Perhaps it was the wind, or maybe the old pipes. But another part of her, the part that had chosen this secluded mansion to escape her past, felt a growing dread. The whispers grew more distinct, resembling murmured conversations from another time. Eleanor tried to pinpoint their source, moving from one end of the attic to the other. 
but they seem to come from everywhere and nowhere all at once. Suddenly, a floorboard creaked behind her. She turned to find Jonathan, his face pale in the moonlight. You've heard them? He said, his voice barely above a whisper. Eleanor nodded, clutching the journals to her chest. What are they? Who are they? Jonathan hesitated, his gaze drifting to the window. This house has seen much, Dr. Gray. Joy, sorrow, life, and death. Some say it's alive, that it remembers. Eleanor frowned. That's impossible. Jonathan stepped closer, his eyes searching hers. Is it? The last owner, Mr. Hawthorne, he said the same. Until the whispers drove him mad. Eleanor's breath caught. What happened to him? He vanished. Jonathan replied, his voice heavy with regret. Just like the others before him. This house takes, Dr. Gray. It always takes. Eleanor's scientific mind rebelled against the idea. There has to be a logical explanation. Perhaps it's a psychological phenomenon, an auditory hallucination triggered by the house's isolation. Jonathan shook his head. I've seen too much, heard too much. You should leave, Dr. Gray, before it's too late. But Eleanor's determination was unwavering. I need to understand, to find the truth. She thought of the hidden traumas she'd helped her patients confront, the demons she'd faced in her own past. This was just another challenge, another mystery to unravel. Jonathan's expression was a mix of admiration and pity. Then be careful. And remember, sometimes the truth is more terrifying than the unknown. With that, he left, leaving Eleanor alone with the whispers and the journals. She felt a pull, an irresistible urge to delve deeper into the mansion's secrets. The house might be trying to claim her, but Eleanor Gray was not one to be easily defeated. As the night deepened, the line between the past and the present blurred. The mansion's walls seemed to breathe, its very foundation pulsating with memories. Eleanor knew she was on the brink of a discovery, one that would either set her free or trap her forever. The mansion's corridors seemed longer than Eleanor remembered, each step echoing back to her like a haunting refrain. The whispers had grown louder, more insistent, guiding her with an invisible hand. They tugged at the edges of her consciousness, a cacophony of voices that seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere. In her study, the familiar scent of old books and ink was now tainted with something else, something metallic, like the smell before a storm. Her gaze was drawn to the bookshelf, where a faint draft made the pages of an open journal flutter. Pushing aside the heavy tomes, Eleanor's fingers brushed against the cold, hard surface of a concealed door. With a deep breath, she pushed it open. The room beyond was shrouded in darkness, save for a single shaft of moonlight that pierced through a crack in the ceiling. The air was thick, suffocating, filled with the weight of memories long forgotten. As Eleanor stepped inside, the whispers grew deafening. They weren't just sounds anymore. They were memories, fragments of her past that she had tried so desperately to bury. The room seemed to pulse with them, the walls closing in, replaying moments of guilt, fear, and regret. In the center of the room stood an old wooden chair, its back turned to her. And on it sat a figure, a shadowy version of Eleanor, her face obscured by darkness. The whispers grew louder, more distinct, as the figure began to speak. You cannot run from your past, it murmured its voice echoing the many that had tormented Eleanor. You brought me here, gave me life, and now you must face me. Eleanor's heart raced. This wasn't just a room. It was a prison of her own making. Every suppressed memory, every ounce of guilt had given life to this entity. She had hoped to find answers in the mansion, but instead, she had found her own damnation. The shadowy figure rose, moving towards Eleanor with a slow, deliberate pace. The room seemed to grow colder, 
the weight of the past pressing down on her. Eleanor tried to retreat, but her feet were rooted to the spot, paralyzed by fear. As the figure reached out, its cold fingers brushing against Eleanor's face, a rush of memories flooded her mind. She saw herself as a young psychologist, making a grave error that had cost a patient their life. The guilt, the shame, the whispers all were manifestations of that fateful day. The realization hit Eleanor like a tidal wave. The mansion, with its secrets and whispers, was not haunted by spirits, but by her own demons. She had become a prisoner of her own mind, trapped in a cycle of guilt and regret. With a final, desperate effort, Eleanor tried to break free, to escape the room and the memories that threatened to consume her. But it was too late. The shadowy figure enveloped her, and the room plunged into darkness. The next morning, Jonathan entered the study, a sense of dread settling over him. The room was empty, the concealed door now sealed shut. The mansion stood silent, its whispers silenced for now. But deep within its walls, Eleanor remained, forever trapped in the room beyond. Did the shadows grip your soul? If you dared to enjoy, hit that like button. Subscribe and stay tuned for more eerie instants. Until then, let the darkness guide you.